we've got to do a better job of getting across that America is free. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of enterprise, and freedom is special and rare. Welcome back, everybody, to Beyond the Headlines. I'm your host, Joshua Jake, and today we're jumping into some insane topics that I'm sure you've probably never heard about in this industry, at least in the way we're going to break it down. First up, we're going to have China starting to lose ground to the United States. Then we'll break down why we could potentially be seeing a super cycle for commodities. And lastly, of course, showing you why this could be the largest Bitcoin bull run we will ever see. So starting with China, there was a massive announcement coming out of Xi Jinping, where he he stated that he is seriously considering South Korea visit. Now, what does this mean? Well, Joe Biden just made a trilateral agreement between Japan, South Korea, and the United States. Just last year, they implemented the Chips Plan 4 Act, where they started destroying the semiconductor manufacturing from China itself, starting to bring manufacturing back to the United States. And you've seen Joe Biden using the manufacturing data of increasing jobs in the States for his presidency and his candidacy for being a president again in this next cycle. But while everybody's been screaming about how BRICS is going to overtake the US dollar, which for you guys that don't know, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Now, I even just ran a Twitter poll on this, but the consensus is about 50-50. So is China really dominating the United States right now? Well, of course, here on Beyond the Headlines, we look at what's going on behind the scenes. So right now, America is mediating a deal and trying to broker a deal between Israel in Saudi Arabia. Not only would this give the Saudis nuclear technology, but in a rare television interview from Mohammed bin Salman on September 20th, Saudi Arabia's crown prince acknowledged with a smile that an agreement on the cards, he said, and I quote, that this would be the biggest historical deal since the Cold War. And not only are they at the cusp of a deal, but he said it would be a quantum leap. So wow. This is huge for the United States. Call me patriotic, but China and BRICS just invited Saudi Arabia to join BRICS at the BRICS summit earlier this year. Of course, being smart and using geopolitical negotiations, the Saudis use this to negotiate nuclear energy and the course of having nuclear facilities in their own country. This would broker a deal with the United States and allow the US to have them settle with Israel and increase national security. Now, all while this is happening, not a lot of people know about this, but China's economy is in a devastating state. China is doing everything it can do to conceal the true extent of its economic turmoil. Xi Jinping, for you guys that don't know, has been hiding information from the public. In fact, not only is the real estate crisis triggering massive alarms for China's shadows banks, which yes, China has shadow banks that we cannot audit. We don't know how bad the debt to loan ratios are actually, but a financially troubled firm has stopped paying investors most recently, risking panic and testing the Chinese government's resolve to to take on debts from its property crisis. But multiple former Chinese analysts have been coming out and one even stated that even 1.4 billion people cannot fill all of these empty homes. And maybe on TikTok or Twitter or YouTube, you've been seeing these massive demolitions take place that are literally leveling cities that are called ghost cities that exist in China. But most recently, China's economic data is getting harder to find. And this all comes due to Xi Jinping's third presidency potentially taking place as it looks like he's going to lock in his third term. For over a year, China's National Bureau of Statistics has been abruptly canceling release of quarterly gross domestic product data. And again, that was over a year ago. Most recently, China has been missing big data reports that were due in July, and they just stopped releasing their youth unemployment numbers. One in five Chinese young adults do not have a job. Their unemployment is rising at massive levels, which is a huge sign of economic slowdown. It's actually what Jerome Powell wants right now in the United States. Now, one analyst says that China is heading for a very nasty fall, and Xi Jinping is actually starting to sound more like a Republican than a communist. Now, I know some of you guys can't tell the difference, and it hurts me, but they're saying this because he is starting to have to focus on capitalistic needs and allowing consumers to actually have personal savings in China. He has to move away from communism because communism and socialism do not work. Never has, never will. And right now, they're in a more of an authoritarian state, and he is issuing injecting stimulus not to consumers because he doesn't want consumers to have money, right? He wants government government to have control. If you're rich in China, you cannot take your money outside of the Chinese Communist Party. However, China has reached the limit of what it can do to stave off an economic crisis. It needs to embrace stimulus, but Beijing's ideology is getting in the way. Despite being a communist country, leaders seem to disapprove of welfare and consumer aid. And Beijing's going to need to issue a massive stimulus program or they are screwed. Because deflation, massive debt, 
falling growth and rising unemployment have all been major themes in China over the last year. So here's where China stands. China is facing a major economic crisis and they've run to the limits of the things that's been doing to keep its economy afloat. Unless the Chinese government is willing to face up to the need to do something very different, then China is headed for a very nasty fall. Now I'm about to show you the data points. For those that believe BRICS is going to overtake the United States dollar, China is in a very bad demographic position. Not only is there more 60 year olds and 50 year olds and 40 year olds and 30 year olds and so on, unemployment is rising, their housing economy is crashing, there's no way they'll be able to keep up with manufacturing within the next five to 10 years. If you didn't know, China is one of the most economically vulnerable countries, specifically relying on massive imports for both food and energy, which is why if China ever goes to war, War with Taiwan and the U.S. gets involved, if the U.S. puts on sanctions that are very similar to what took place in Russia, it straight up could cause millions to starve in China. Their economy would collapse. Now, of course, the United States relies on China for a ton of manufacturing. But as the data shows, and as I mentioned earlier, manufacturing and construction spending in the United States just hit an all-time high. In fact, I believe it is a record since World War II. The U.S. industrial production continues to expand, and this was just an August, which could factor into the reasons on why unemployment is so low in the United States. Even though Jerome Powell wants to raise unemployment and hurt the middle class and economically break us to bring down inflation, with the CHIPS Plan 4 Act and bringing back all the manufacturing to the United States, now breaking away from globalization and moving towards regionalism, where we just saw Joe Biden actually make a good deal with Canada and Mexico, it actually looks like the Biden administration is pinching China pretty well. And it hurts me to say that because his environmental policies freaking suck. But guys, this is where you're going to want to smash that like button you're definitely going to want to subscribe and turn on post notifications for these videos because what this means for commodities is they're about to embark on yet again another massive bull run as we shift towards a failing dollar a bear and crab stock market and more than likely years of upcoming commodity prosperity china is going to be forced to print the united states is going to be forced to print we have trillions of dollars in debt and trillions of dollars in interest payments alone we never default remember that and as xi jinping starts shifting more towards capitalism because his country is failing in more more than likely, for the first time, he is going to have to inject stimulus to his consumers. Again, and this, this could be six to 18 months from now. Look at what the charts are saying. This is for my boy Jax is on Twitter. Shout him out. Go give him a follow on Twitter. I do Twitter spaces with him all the time. But you can see with gold over the stock market, you can see that whenever it's in the red, gold's on the top. Whenever it's in a red, it's in a bear market. Whenever the stocks are in a green, it's in a bull market. Whenever gold's in a bear market, stocks are in a bull run. When gold's in a bull run, stocks are in a bear market. Again, back to the 1980s, to the year 2000, bear market for gold, massively manipulated. Stock markets go on a massive run. And you can follow this pattern all the way to where we're at today, which is where we see stocks hitting and peaking and more than likely moving into a sideways action market or a crab market or multi-year bear market. And gold and commodities are about to explode. Here's what it looks like for all commodities, guys. When we go to wars, when we go into a massive recession or stock markets are in a multi-year prolonged bear market, commodities follow each other gold silver oil and copper all on this chart right in front of us and let me pull this back for you uh, again brought to you by Jax is here you can see when you overlay them they're all near identical of course these are going to have different market caps and a little bit of different use cases but the overall thesis and overall movement is identical to one another here's gold versus the inverse us dollar the blue line here is the us dollar inverted which means when it bottoms out that's when the dollar tops right so when the dollar loses value again remember it's inverted gold goes on a bull run. When the dollar gains value, remember, bottoming out means it's gaining value because it's inverted, gold goes into a bear market. Again, dollar loses value, bull run, dollar gains value, bear market for gold. And right now, we have definitely bottomed out as interest rates are peaking, inflation is being reduced, and whether or not we get another 25, 50 basis points six months from now, just in case inflation does come back, again, in that six to 18 month time frame, we are looking at gold and commodities to go into a bull run as we are forced to print more money to pay off our debts and the dollar loses value. A very bullish chart here is for gold, which we're looking over two decades is about to break out of a massive bullish pattern to the upside. We could potentially break up to $3,750 for an ounce of gold. Now here is Bitcoin compared 
to the rest of the commodities. Now, from afar, this doesn't look like it follows it whatsoever, right? Gold started or Bitcoin started in 2010 and it's just been in a massive parabolic rally. But we need to zoom in. We need to see what happened in 2020. When you zoom in, this is Bitcoin versus silver. It follows a near identical pattern to commodities. It shifted in 2020. 2020 was the year Bitcoin shifted and broke its historical patterns. That four year cycle, yes, it started following commodities in this last cycle. And of course, we're seeing silver as well as gold looking to break out of a massive bullish pattern in the coming months. But here's another chart of Bitcoin overlaying copper. Again, near identical movement. Bitcoin moves as a commodity. The SEC, the CFTC have all called Bitcoin a commodity. And if we get this breakout, which right now is starting to enter a confirmation phase, I believe Bitcoin, if you watch episode one, being able to capture all of the mitigation of emissions and CO2 emissions with carbon and fossil fuels, being able to access that negative energy industry makes Bitcoin not only digital gold, but it makes it digital oil. It is the world's greatest commodity to ever exist. And if it reaches the market cap that I believe it can, again, over a 10 year cycle. People that think they're too late to Bitcoin are very misunderstood because this is the comparison to gold at where it's today, which right now would be a 25 X Bitcoin would sit at $657,000. And that is at the beginning of what could be a very long commodity bull run. Guys, that's all I have for you guys today. If you found any value in this video, please let me know in the comments. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you turn on those post notifications because like I told you guys in the first episode. This show is meant for transparency. It's meant for fundamentals. It's meant to show you that with all of the research in the video, it's all backed by real information, real evidence, real analytics. And if you're here for that type of education, I will see you guys in the next video.